Have you ever wondered what to do with all your leftover bits and drips and things like that? Well, this is a great way to use them up. And I've actually been commissioned to make this piece. They went through all my drips and pieces and chose these ones. I have broken them up a little bit smaller and tried to make sure they are flat as well because that's really important. And what I'm going to do is make a table for them. Oddly enough, they've supplied me with the legs. So these are the legs they want to go on the table. They're just a nice wooden leg. They want me to stain these and I've got a colour to stain these with as well and fix these to the underside of the table. Now I'm going to pour two of these because I'm going to attach them to each other so it's a nice thicker table and this mould was sent to me by one of my lovely members Adelaide thank you so much for sending me this and she gives great advice in the group if you want to be a member and benefit from Adelaide and all the other people's advice as well that's in there and my support and everybody else's support click the link in the description below and you can also have your name on my members board like these ones I've made sure that's nice and clean. I don't want it to be too marked. So I'm doing this in a deep pour, and that is why I've got it working on a board with my silicon mat. So actually, when I've poured this first one, I can move it somewhere nice and level and carry on working in my area. What I'm going to be using is the T-Expert Epoxy Resin Deep Pour. It's a two-to-one mix. Now, I love this. It's my favourite of all the deep pours that I've used, and I've used quite a lot of them as well. The other great thing is it comes in lots of different sizes, which is really useful if you're not doing that much deep pouring. So you don't have to buy like two or three gallons at a time. It gives you a one hour work time. It's non-toxic. This is the pro version and it's a really good version and it's got low VOCs. It's self-leveling and it's very resistant to yellowing. And that's going to be really important for today as well because I'm going to have some clear spaces. Now these are predominantly going to be put on quite randomly but with some sort of semblance to them, if that makes any sense. Probably none at all. I've got my resin mixed up and because it's a deep pot and I'm using quite a lot of it, I've mixed it up in a larger pot. Now what I am going to be doing, of course, is adding some glitter to this. It's a white glitter, so it's actually going to go fairly clear and I'm not adding too much, just a tiny bit to give it a bit of a sparkle and stirring that in. Now what I need to do is pour my first layer in. You see that little bit of sparkle that's in there? That is enough. I want to make sure this is to all the edges. It's really important to use the right resin for the right job. And this is quite a lot of resin in here and you don't want this to flash cure and be spoiled. So it's important to use a slow cure deep pour resin. And that's why I'm using this one by Tea Expert because I really like it. I know it always gives me brilliant results. So I'm going to let that settle for a few minutes before I put the other bits in. But what I will do first is just go over it and pop any bubbles that have come up from mixing and pouring. Now, I don't mind if there's a few bubbles in this because actually sometimes bubbles can reflect the light really well and make it look quite pretty. And then I'm going to leave that now for about 10 minutes before I do anything else to it. Let's have 10 minutes now. And what I'm going to do is start putting my bits in. I want to make sure that I get them round the right way because they are slightly different. Now they will trap bubbles, there is no doubt about it, underneath them and around them. But we're not worried about that at this stage. Again, another really good reason to use the deep pour. Now I'm going to spread these out a little bit so they fill all the gaps. And if there's any bits that are too high for this actual table, then I can take them out. I'm also pushing them down as well because that'll help release any bubbles that are trapped underneath them as you're doing it. Because it's the bubbles that are trapped underneath items that cause things to float up in your resin. This is what I meant when I said I'm kind of doing it random, but not random <laughs> in a way, because I'm moving them around and putting them into places if I think, oh, there's a gap there or I need a bit more of that particular shape or colour in that bit there. And the other thing is you get at least an hour of working time with a deep pour. So you don't have to worry that it's going to go really thick and then you can't move it around and you've used everything up or wasted it. Now I've got all the bits where I want them. What I'm going to do is add my last lot of the resin on top of this. And I'm going to do this fairly slowly. I don't want these things to move around too much if I can help it. I'm going to fill this right to the very top. And then I will burst it and then I'll come back and show you what it's like once it's been cured for 48 hours. Well, this is all nice and cured now and I can take it out of its mould. It should come out fairly easily. Release it all the way around first. So that's released nice and easily and 
it's virtually cured, but it is still a little bit flexible after 48 hours. So you really do need to leave this another at least 48 hours before you were to do anything with it. Because don't forget, it is a slow cure resin. And I'm not sure whether I like that side or that side better. Do you know, I quite like that side because you can see a little bit more of that extra glitter I put in. So I've put that somewhere nice and safe and flat and what I need to do now is pour a second one that I'm going to do in here. So I've got my deep pour mixed up again and I've used some transparent blue, some blue glitter and some white glitter in there. And all I need to do is fill this in. I'm working on my board again so that I can can easily move it out of the way because I've got quite a bit to do today. I don't want my main work surface being covered in this, to be honest. So I'll keep checking this over the next hour or so and bursting any bubbles with a long neck lighter, not a torch. The last thing I want to do is catch this mold and cause it to stick. And that might not look like it, but that is transparent. It's not clear, but it's transparent. And I do know that that glitter in this deep port will sink right the way down to that bottom as well. So it'll just lay flat on that bottom, which is absolutely fine. The second layer is all cured now. So again, it's just a case of taking it out of its mold and look how pretty that is. Wow, I love that. Oh, I do love that. And that's because the resin actually settled right the way down to the bottom, as I said it would. Now I have to decide which way up I'm gonna have this, whether I'm gonna have it that way up or that way up. And I actually really, really like that way up. I believe if I have it that way up, then I've got to have this one this way up. Yeah, so then they'll line up like that and it'll be its double thickness. Now, I could glue them straight together like this now, but what I feel needs to be done is I'm going to rough this side up and I'm also going to rough this side up because that way I'll get a much better adhesion. All I'm going to be using is 120 grit sandpaper. So I need to rough this side up and this side up. And all I'm doing is going over it in different directions with the sandpaper all the way over thank you once again Adelaide for sending me this mold I'm really pleased and I know you're looking forward to seeing what I make with it right so that's that one done just gonna finish off doing this and a quick thank you to everyone that got me a coffee last month as well honestly it's you people that allow me to live the dream of being a crafter full time and doing what I do so thank you very much indeed can't tell you how much I appreciate it, especially with times being really hard. So all the coffees really do help me keep going. Thank you. So now we've done that, what's really important now is to get rid of all the dust that was on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over them both with a baby wipe first and get rid of that dust. And you shouldn't see any of those scratch marks once it's all completely done. Because the resin will fill those in that I'm going to use. And now I'm going to use a bit of 99% alcohol to go over that again and that will also help clean off any grease or lift any of that remaining dust that's in there and i'm going to be using a five minute epoxy to glue these two pieces together and it does dry really really quickly so you do have to work fairly quickly with it and now i've got all that mixed up all i need to do is spread a thin layer over this now i'm not going to go right up to the very edges because i don't want to encourage any squeeze out when i put it together so if I go up to about 5 10 mils, half an inch from the edge, then I'm not going to get much squeeze out. You only get a few minutes to work with this as well. It will dry clear, which is important. I'm going to quickly give that a torch. So that'll get rid of any bubbles. And now we need to line this up as best as we can. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some weight on it gently. And these are just old resin blocks where companies have sent me resin and I've not liked their resin. And so what I've done is just made weights out of it and they come in very, very handy. And now I'm going to leave that for probably about an hour. I know it's a five minute epoxy, but I'm going to leave that for about an hour. Well, this has all been drying now for over an hour, about an hour and 20 minutes. And it must be dry because the resin that I mixed up in this little cup is completely dry. But it will keep curing and get harder as the days go on. So now what I have to do is take my tape off it. And this is the bit that makes me always really nervous because I'm nearly 90% finished the project. And this is the bit where I'll lightly 
to mess it up or break it. And as my members know, I do do lots of mess ups because they get to see the pictures of what I mess up. So what I now need to do is turn this over and these are the bits that are going to have the feet on. So they need to be slanty facing outwards. That way, when you put the legs in, the legs will splay outwards rather than inwards, which would look silly. So this next part is really important as well because it will stop you splitting your resin. And that is the last thing you want to do. You don't want to be splitting your resin. So I've put these around by eye, which is fairly simple because it's a circular thing. Now I'm going to bring them in a little bit. I'm happy with the placing of those. So what I'm going to do now is with a marker pen, go round, mark all where I need to screw these to the thing. And before I put any screws in this, I'm going to counter drill my holes. And as I can see where they are going, then that is where I'm going to do it. Now I'm going to do it slowly. And I've put a bit of tape on my drill to ensure that I don't drill too far down. Because I don't want to drill right the way through it. And you'd want to drill it slowly because if not, the heat of the drill will cause too much friction. And then you wouldn't be able to get your dust out. Make sure you're wearing a mask as well while you're doing this bit. So I screwed that one in and now I know that those ones fit. And now it's time to put my screws in. So they're all attached there nicely and they're not going to go anywhere. And none of it's split, which is great. And that's why it's so important to drill your counter holes first. And as you can see, you can't see any of the screws through the top, which is a miracle really for me. So there we go. That's what it finished. And it's on my studio floor, which obviously isn't setting it off in its most beautiful <laughs> feeling and look. But I'm really pleased with the way it's come out. It's a great little side table. And once the legs are painted or stained the color that they need to be, then again, I think that is going to look awesome but that's why you must use the correct resin and i absolutely love the t-expert deep pour resin hope you've enjoyed this video as much as i have please remember to hit that like button as well it really helps my videos to get out there and don't forget as well to subscribe if you've not already subscribed that way you don't miss out on any of my future videos take care enjoy your resin bye